Sometimes to solve a big problem, you need to examine it on the most minute scale. Take colony collapse disorder. For the past four years, it's killed one third of the honeybees in the United States. And that's a big problem. Not just for the honeybees, but for humans too. Almonds, citrus fruit, stone fruit, these all require honeybees to pollinate them. And it's a big business. So scientists at UC San Francisco's Derisi Lab tackled the problem in a major way, looking at something even smaller than the bees. The microbiome, the, um, the community of microbes that live on the bees. And instead of just looking at honeybees affected by colony collapse disorder, the researchers wanted to know what lives on honeybees in general, all honeybees. We undertook a much larger project to understand what was the typical kind of pathogens we would find in a large commercial migratory bee farming operation. That is, we don't know enough about pathogens that are in bees to make informed judgments about what we find in a collapsed colony versus a not collapsed colony. They started with 20 hives in four different states and trained beekeepers to use a bee vac to collect a few of the insects. We took samples every week for the whole year from both the entrance and interior. The scientists designed a thorough and intricate system to screen the bee samples back at UCSF. We use the same technologies to look at honeybee health that we use for human health. And the three new technologies were a microarray platform that we designed and made here at UCSF. We use deep sequencing, which really allows us to just sequence everything in a sample. So we get to really find out what types of organisms are there. And then we also did quantitative PCR, which allows us not only to tell if a pathogen's there or not, but how abundant it was in the sample. They found and identified viruses, bacteria, and other microorganisms. There were a multitude of different pathogens that were invading these colonies. We found a eukaryotic single cell parasite called a carthidia. Nobody really knows what the effect of this is or what they're doing in the bee colonies. These were in the guts of the bees. We found uh, four new viruses, two of which are really interesting because they rose to incredibly high levels. One of these viruses, Lake Sinai virus 2, turned out to be the most abundant component of the honeybee microbiome, that is, all the organisms in the bee. Yet nobody knew it was there. Whereas every other virus had a peak in the summer, Lake Sinai virus 2 had a tremendous peak in the winter. And that's interesting for CCD because the colonies collapse in the winter. And the interesting about Crithidia is that it also has a winter peak, unlike all the other microbes which have a summer peak. So it's a promising lead, and I'll stress that we definitely don't know what causes CCD yet. This large study on small organisms is only the start of solving the enormous problem of colony collapse disorder. Really, this gives us a glimpse into what's there and what changes over time. The team has several follow-up projects. They are working to understand how the different viruses affect bees and how the bees fend off the viruses. We're also going to follow up on, for example, the Crithidia, this single-celled parasite that we found in the bee guts. We've almost completed sequencing its entire genome, and we're going to characterize its whole life cycle and what it does to the bee. There's so much to learn about the honeybee microbiome. that can investigate these organisms um, at the, you know, the minute scale, but it's also on the global food production scale and tying it into the environment.